Hey guys, in today's video we are going to be looking at the Klingon Alien Battle Cruiser. Now this is a re-release by Polar Lights and AMT, and it should be available for pre-order at Cult TV Man Hobby Shop. So this is a companion piece, of course, to the USS Enterprise Spaceship Model Kit, also re-released this summer by Polar Lights. And these two model kits have been companion pieces for over 50 years. Now, AMT, back in 1968, not only made the model kits for the Klingon Battlecruiser, they actually made the filming model for the Klingon Battlecruiser that was used in the show. AMT actually made a deal with the producers of Star Trek that they would get the rights to make the model kits if they made the filming model for the Klingon D7 and for the Galileo shuttle. Now, of course, it wasn't called the D7 back then. It was just the Klingon ship or the Klingon battle cruiser. The D7 was assigned to it later. But some real pieces of modeling history here in these two model kits. Now, just like the USS Enterprise, parts of this model kit have been redone over the years in the 70s and the 90s. And of course, when Polar Lights kind of got the license to reissue so many of these kits, they did it with some upgrades. But the bulk of what we're looking at in this model kit is still the original model kit, its original parts, and of course, the original flavor of that vintage kit. Now, of course, is this vintage reissue going to be the most accurate and best version of the Klingon Battlecruiser from the original series? Probably not. I think that would go to the 1-1000th scale Klingon Battlecruiser that was put out by Polar Lights in the early 2000s. It's, that's a fantastic model kit. Uh, Ravel has also done a D7 where they tried to make it more like the Trials and Tribulations episode of Deep Space Nine with a lot of added detail. Uh, but if you're picking up this model kit, you're probably not picking it up for it being the best and most accurate version of the D7. You're picking it up for nostalgia and because this is such a large part of modeling history. Uh, this is a model kit, once again, that has been built for over 50 years by Star Trek modelers. And it's something just to, to grab, to build. It's a companion piece for your classic USS Enterprise. And that's really kind of what I'll be looking at it as in my collection. I, I am going to now build my classic Enterprise. I'm going to build this uh, Klingon Battlecruiser. No upgrades on any of them. I'm just going to build them as they are as kind of vintage model kits. Now, one thing that is fantastic is AMT and Round 2 have really gone to a lot of trouble to give us these classic-looking boxes with some of the original artwork and flavor of those old vintage kits. So you can see wonderful artwork here on the box, the old-style boxes and logos, Klingon, the Alien Battlecruiser Spaceship Model Kits. Of course, it tells you that the USS Enterprise is available as well as seen on TV. Very nice. Yep, there's our little diagram of the ship. All right, and let's look at the back. We have Klingon Battlecruiser by AMT, revised decals with multiple window options and Klingon markings for two color schemes, molded in color, details accurate to the filming model used in the show. Includes dome base with metal support rod. That, of course, wasn't done in the 60s. 14 and a half inches long, 42 parts. All right, and yeah, that's a classic looking D7 Klingon Battlecruiser from the original show. All right, let's, let's get this open and take a look. Okay, nice packaging. All right, first up, we have our dome base that round two puts in so many of their releases and we have chrome parts all right so in chrome we have some of the accents they'll go on top of that hangar bay a couple extra grills and it looks like our torpedo launcher is done in chrome very nice parts there now i have never built this classic klingon battlecruiser I'm guessing most of these parts are the same as they've always been. Uh, very simple. Now, round two has an entire blog about the color scheme for this model kit, how it's a two-tone color scheme. Um, I'll just kind of study that to get an idea of how I want to paint this. 
But yeah, real simple details here. Uh, that's kind of the back of the nacelles. Uh, these are the parts where those chrome pieces will be attached. Here is kind of our command deck. The front of that hangar bay engine section. It's kind of funny looking at this, uh, having worked so much in this past fall on the, on the Kronos 1, which is kind of the best model kit of a Klingon battlecruiser. Because, of course, the Kronos 1 and the Katinga and those fantastic model kits, they've got all the same parts as the old D7, just done with so much better production quality and such a better model kit. Um, so it's kind of funny to kind of see it in such kind of a, a simplified and reduced form. But this is kind of the classic. This is where things started. Just like the Kronos 1 and Katinga, top of the hole, bottom of the hole, just... Simple pieces, so much smaller. And uh, this this section with it done straight down the middle, uh, that's got to be a, a killer seam to have to kind of work on. Uh, but there is kind of our, our bulb section, our neck. I, you know, we'll have to just build it and see how it builds and see what the seams are like. Uh, but a, a very simple, looks like a pretty straightforward build. And hopefully a good looking model kit when we're done. We have our instructions carrying on some of those vintage design choices. Yeah. And of course, a pretty simple decal instruction sheet here. And of course, a little instruction that you can hang it by a thread and just kind of a, a way to do that to hang it. Maybe I'll do that. I'm right out of room on my shelves. All right, and here are, and here is our decal sheet. So like they said, they've got two different color schemes. Uh, looks like we've got a Klingon symbol with yellow and a Klingon symbol with a little bit more tan. Uh, kind of tan lettering versus white lettering. So two kind of choices there. Now this is where I'd really like more information in the instructions because clearly they've given us these kind of two different color choices uh, on purpose. So we've got kind of the bright yellow with the white or we have kind of the beige uh, coloring for most of it. And I'd love to know why that is. Is one of them accurate to the original model? Is one accurate uh, to the filming model and one to the model kit. Uh, did the filming model change during TOS for and do white letters versus the gray? Or I know there's a lot of conflicting ways to paint this. So if you paint it a deep green, are you supposed to use one? If you do it kind of a lighter green or even that lavender, are you supposed to use the other? Uh, I'd love to kind of know what the reasoning is between these two different color schemes. Of course, the decal should be pretty nice, but yeah, this is this is kind of all you get. You get kind of an instruction of what goes where, but no kind of rhyme or reason or explanation as why you might go with one color scheme over the other. One thing that's really neat is when Polar Lights in Round 2 re-released this model kit back in 2011, they did a couple articles on their blog talking about some of their changes. So I was able to look at that and I'll just kind of point out some of the things that they made more accurate from the model kit to match the filming model. The first part is they they no longer had the clear parts, so they kind of added in these stair steps uh, here to the top of this model kit to make that accurate. The detail right back here, they added that detail. All right. Well, that is... Well, that is a very quick look at a very classic model kit the klingon alien battle cruiser as seen on star trek and i'm going to build this up no frills i'm going to enjoy it for what it is a reissue of a very classic model kit and i'm going to pair it with my classic 650th scale USS Enterprise and make a little retro display of these retro vintage models. And quite frankly, I'm quite excited to do it. It should be a fun change of pace. And those videos should come up pretty soon because these are going to be some pretty quick builds. 
Thank you guys for following the channel, and I'll be back with those builds soon. And the front grill here, that was a change I made in 2011 to make it accurate. And from what I could tell, it looks like there was a detail that was inlaid maybe here uh, that they removed, and they might have removed detail here. I'm going to link the two articles that they made about this model kit in the comments, but they're a really fascinating read. And it really drove the point home that this is, this might actually be a very accurate model kit uh, to the original filming model. So perhaps I was mistaken uh, when I started off saying that it wasn't that accurate of a model kit. It might really be a pretty accurate kit. Uh, it was, of course, made by the same people who were making the filming model, and it was updated by some people who really love Star Trek and the model kits in 2011. So now I'm really excited to get this thing built. Uh, the second article is about the color scheme, because, uh, of course, the ship appeared gray uh, throughout most of the series on all of our televisions. I think it was repainted gray uh, before the filming model ended up on several public appearances. But the model was actually originally in a green and a purple blue. Uh, of course, there's all sorts of information on these color schemes all over the internet. Uh, but it leaves me with some difficult choices of how I'm going to paint my version of the Klingon D7 or the Alien Battle Cruiser. And I'm getting kind of excited about working on it. Well, that is a very quick look at a very classic model kit, the Klingon Alien Battlecruiser as seen on Star Trek. And I'm going to build this up, no frills. I'm going to enjoy it for what it is, a reissue of a very classic model kit. And I'm going to pair it with my classic 650th scale USS Enterprise and make a little retro display of these retro vintage models. And quite frankly, I'm quite excited to do it. It should be a fun change of pace. And those videos should come up pretty soon because these are going to be some pretty quick builds. Thank you guys for following the channel and I'll be back with those builds soon.